What if I told you that some Filipinos carry genetic traces of seafaring warriors from Scandinavia? Not Spanish conquistadors, not Asian traders, but Vikings. Blonde-haired, blue-eyed Norsemen who raided Europe over a thousand years ago. This sounds impossible, right? The Philippines and Scandinavia are separated by nearly 10,000 kilometers. Yet recent genetic studies have uncovered something extraordinary that's rewriting what we thought we knew about ancient migration and human history. Today, we're diving deep into one of the most unexpected genetic mysteries of our time, a hidden connection that spans continents, centuries, and challenges everything we assumed about the peopling of Southeast Asia. The discovery. The story begins not in Manila or Stockholm, but in a genetics laboratory where researchers were conducting routine DNA analysis of Filipino populations. They were studying the typical migration patterns, expecting to find genetic markers from China, Indonesia, Malaysia, and perhaps some Spanish colonial DNA. What they found instead left them stunned. But wait, before we continue this story, our goal on this video is to get 500 likes and share your reaction in the comments. Subscribe to the channel, turn on bell notifications. Let's continue to the story. Buried within the genetic code of certain Filipino populations were Hapla groups, specific genetic markers passed down through generations that matched those found predominantly in Northern Europe, particularly Scandinavia. We're talking about the I-1 haplogroup, sometimes called the Viking haplogroup, because it's most concentrated in Norway, Sweden, and Denmark. But here's where it gets even stranger. These weren't recent introductions from modern migration or intermarriage. The genetic signatures suggested these markers had been present in the Filipino gene pool for hundreds, possibly even a thousand years. This was ancient DNA, predating Spanish colonization, predating even the Ming Dynasty's maritime expeditions. How could Viking DNA possibly end up in Filipino bloodlines? The Vikings never sailed to Southeast Asia. Or did they? Understanding the Vikings. Before we solve this mystery, we need to understand who the Vikings really were. Popular culture shows us raiders with horned helmets attacking monasteries. But the Vikings were so much more than warriors. They were perhaps the greatest seafarers and explorers of the medieval world. From the 8th to the 11th centuries, Vikings didn't just raid. They traded, explored, and settled across vast distances. They reached North America 500 years before Columbus. They established kingdoms in England, Ireland, and France. They sailed down Russian rivers to reach Constantinople and traded with the Byzantine Empire. Viking traders even reached the Middle East, where Arab scholars documented their arrival. But here's the crucial part. Vikings were genetic mixers. Wherever they went, they intermarried with local populations. A Viking settlement wasn't just Scandinavian, it was a melting pot. Vikings who settled in Russia mixed with Slavic peoples. Those in Britain mixed with Anglo-Saxons. Those who reached the Mediterranean mixed with Southern Europeans. This genetic mixing is key to our mystery because Vikings didn't need to physically reach the Philippines themselves. They just needed to pass their DNA to populations that eventually did. The Silk Road connection. Now we enter the realm of the Silk Road, but not just the land routes we learned about in school. There was a maritime Silk Road, a network of sea routes connecting the Middle East India, Southeast Asia, and China. This maritime highway existed for over 2,000 years, with its peak during the exact period when Vikings were active. 
Here's where the pieces start fitting together. Vikings established significant presence in the Byzantine Empire and traded extensively through the Middle East. Some Vikings, known as the Varangian Guard, served as elite warriors for Byzantine emperors. These Norse warriors intermarried with local populations in Constantinople, the Caucasus, and even Persia. Meanwhile, Arab and Persian traders dominated the maritime Silk Road, regularly sailing to Southeast Asia, including what is now the Philippines. These weren't short trips. Entire families moved, communities were established, and significant intermarriage occurred. The genetic pathway becomes clearer. Viking DNA entered Middle Eastern and Central Asian populations through intermarriage and settlement. These populations then traveled along trade routes to Southeast Asia. Over generations, through multiple intermediary populations, trace amounts of Viking genetic markers made their way to the Philippines. But there's another, even more intriguing possibility. The Rus Viking theory. Let's talk about the Rus Vikings, Scandinavians who traveled east instead of west. While their western cousins raided England and France, these eastern Vikings sailed down the Volga and Dnieper rivers, establishing trade networks that stretched from Sweden to the Caspian Sea and beyond. The Rus Vikings founded settlements that would eventually become Russia and Ukraine. But more importantly, they became the crucial link between Scandinavia and Asia. They traded with the Khazars, the Bulgars, and eventually made contact with Chinese and Central Asian merchants along the Silk Road. Archaeological evidence shows that Rus Vikings reached as far as the Caspian Sea region by the 9th century. From there, their genetic material could have been passed to Turkic and Mongol populations, who later swept across Asia. The Mongol Empire, which connected East and West like never before, could have been a genetic superhighway. Consider this timeline. Vikings reached Central Asia by 900 AD. Mongol expansion occurs in the 1200s. The Philippine archipelago had extensive trade connections with China and Southeast Asian empires throughout this period. Genetic material doesn't need direct contact. It can hopscotch through populations over centuries. But here's the truly wild possibility that some researchers are investigating. Could individual Vikings have actually made it further east than we ever imagined? The outlier theory. Historical records are incomplete. For every documented Viking voyage, there were probably dozens that left no written trace. We know Vikings reached North America, but we only discovered that archaeological evidence in the 1960s. How many other Viking journeys remain undiscovered? Some historians point to tantalizing clues. Medieval Chinese sources mention foreign traders with unusual appearances, tall, pale-skinned, with light hair and eyes arriving from the western seas. Could some of these have been Vikings who traveled the entire length of the Silk Road? There's also the phenomenon of outlier genetics, when individuals from one population end up in completely unexpected locations. We found Roman coins in Japan, African skeletons in medieval England, and South American plants in pre-Columbian Pacific Islands. Human migration has always been more complex than we imagine. Could a small group of adventurous Vikings, perhaps captured as slaves, hired as mercenaries, or simply lost on trading expeditions, have ended up in Central or even East Asia? Could they have joined merchant caravans, married into local families, and had their DNA eventually reach Southeast Asia through generations of subsequent migration? It sounds far-fetched, but genetic evidence doesn't lie. 
That Viking DNA got to the Philippines somehow. The scientific evidence. Let's examine what the genetics actually tell us. The haplogroups found in some Filipino populations aren't abundant. We're talking about trace amounts, perhaps 1 to 3% in certain communities. This suggests ancient admixture, not recent migration. DNA analysis can estimate when genetic mixing occurred based on the number of generations and genetic drift. The Viking-associated markers in Filipino populations show patterns consistent with introduction between 500 to 1,000 years ago, right in the time frame of the medieval warm period when both Viking expansion and maritime Silk Road trade were at their peak. Interestingly, these genetic markers aren't evenly distributed across the Philippines. They appear more frequently in coastal communities with histories of extensive trade connections, particularly in areas that ancient Chinese and Arab texts identify as trading ports. This geographic pattern supports the trade route hypothesis. If the DNA came through maritime merchant networks, we'd expect to find it concentrated in historical trading hubs. And that's exactly what researchers are finding. But science also teaches us humility. Genetic studies of Southeast Asian populations are still relatively limited. As more Filipinos get their DNA analyzed and databases expand, we may discover this Viking connection is more widespread than currently known, or we might find alternative explanations. Alternative explanations. We should consider other possibilities. Could these genetic markers have reached the Philippines through other routes entirely? Spanish colonization is one obvious candidate, but the genetic signatures appear too old for that explanation. However, there were pre-Spanish European contacts with Asia. Marco Polo reached China in the 1200s, and other European traders and explorers followed. Could they have been carriers?